Yeah, good night. This is the cutting edge, a warm, warm night in Jamaica. You know, them are celebrate. And sometimes them forget, say, you have artists out there where you need to celebrate. Give thanks to IRFM. Remember, say, Bonavilla is deserving of celebrating. Today is Bonavilla's birthday. We we'll have played some Bonavilla before going to the moon to the matter. We have a guest all the way from California. <laughs> Sometimes when you say California, everybody thinks about LA. But California is a big place. So we have a guest here. Uh, I want to know all of the artists them supposed to be very interested in how we're going to talk about. Very interested. Trust me. So you want to know. You have to first of all, you need Queen Africa and Sister Carol. Sorry, Queen Africa and Bonnie Wheeler. Now you listen to Sister Carol and Bonnie Wheeler. Yes, cutting edge. So, as we are tell you, well, IRFM celebrating Bonneville already right today. The program over to Thursday, we play one hour of Bonneville and never celebrating birthday. Last week, Thursday. Today, we start out with Bonneville. Bonneville and Queen Africa, and then Bonneville and Sister Carol. We have a whole album with Bono Wheeler and some of the sister them. Well, here we know. We just played the Bono Wheeler and the sister. Oh, we tell us we have an interview. She come and she say, as she first looked about Bono Wheeler and him band, visa them to go to America when they go tour. We have two lines at the, the house, you know. Believe you me, two lines of fire for your yard, you know. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, Muta. Why are you fire, we are two la. You know, say, how old am I know you know, about 15 years old? No, 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 no. When, since Pele. Pele did 2020. Yeah. 2020. Yeah, one time I road managed for you. Yeah. That, that, when Pele was getting sick back yeah, in those yeah, days, yeah. and she asked me to step in because she couldn't come, and I yeah, road managed yeah, yeah, for yeah, you. I and it was a long time ago. So it's been like 30, about 30 20s, years. 20, 30 20, years. Early. Yeah, like in the 90s. Yeah. In like 99. 90s? Yeah, like 99, 2000. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, long, yeah. long time ago. How many of you used to do coaching at them time there? Never what? Excuse me? No, I'm not trying to figure out if we used to do cutting edge them time there. No, when no, no. We, you we were doing your band. And, yeah, you had your, your band. So 30 and, years ago then. It was a tour, a, yeah. A 30 years ago. Yes, a long yeah. time ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> we date ourselves. I want to introduce yourself to Jamaica. I know them know you already. Well, I mean, I'm the artists them. Okay, yeah. Well, you my have name's... artists out there right now. Let me just tell you uh, my story. My name is Tula Carter, and I have a company for since 1994 uh, called Third World Music. And I also had a company previous to that. And the, and the reason people say, why did you call it Third World Music? I said, well, because I was doing visas and bringing artists to the United from the States third world. from the third world. <laughs> yeah, so, and it was before, we were doing all these names before the internet, before smartphones, before yeah. people were really on computers. In 94, we mm -hmm. were just doing everything with our posters and our and our uh, guest list and our and our databases from handwritten databases and books and things. I mean, and little postcards and little Rolodexes. So nobody would think that you could have a name that somebody that conflicts with someone else. So, yeah, but yeah. nevertheless, that's the name of it. It's Third World Music Group. And I um, so in 90, 1994, we were. Um, I was also in another company which was out based in Oakland. And it was called Out of Many One, Out of Many One Productions with a partner named Carlton Campbell. Carlton Campbell is related to Bunny Whaler, related to Andrew Tosh. 
Andrew Tosh's mom is is Bunny Whaler's sister. Mm. So so there's like this connection of Bunny Whaler, even though I didn't know I was going to speak today. But the fun, the funny thing is, is that the story starts with Bunny Whaler. Um, my story, working, doing immigration for artists, that's what I do. Um, I do artist management and I also work with artists to get them visas to come to the United States from from different countries, um, but mostly Jamaica, you know, because reggae is so close to me in my heart. And I understand it so well, I can defend it and work it. And I really always wanted to be a bridge to help artists come because I was very concerned about the culture being watered down yeah. in America. Well, so, the last, the last year one visa I have is you did. Which one? The last year one visa. Oh one. Oh one visa is you did. Yeah. Work it all. That was a while ago. All right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I can yeah. I'm going to tell you about how the, the explain. I have a list. I'll explain about what the visas are, but um, and what and how you how you um, what you're looking for in a visa and what you need and so on. Yeah. No, I'm going to do research on so it. Yeah. yeah. Where you born? In uh, was born in New Jersey. Born um, in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And live in California, in I San Francisco. Newark, California. In San Francisco, yeah. And your interests just jump up in a reggae. I didn't have other interests in other kind of music. Well, you know, my background, my mom's, my our family, my, my mom's side is from Trinidad. So we grew up around, you know, Calypso and, and, uh, and West Indian music and West Indian culture, but not necessarily Jamaican culture. Um, and then as California was, the West Coast was a huge reggae uh, territory. So if you lived in California, no matter where you're from, you were going to be indoctrinated at some point yes, with reggae. Of course. So, um, so peep, so it just naturally, I gravitated to reggae music more than any other music. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then because I was around people who needed help in terms of doing, I, we did, I was a promoter. Um, that's how I ended up working with Bunny Whaler. We brought Bunny Whaler to uh, my partner and I brought Bunny Whaler to uh, Berkeley, California. And we were um, it was 1994. We were going to uh, share share the cost of bringing him with a promoter out of Los Angeles. So we were in up in San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. They were doing a show that had a huge show. That on, so our show was going to be on Saturday. This was going to be on Sunday. We sp- uh, split the cost on the airfare and on the visas and certain Hotel things. Hotel hunting, yeah. Well, we, to bring Bunny up and to give Bunny... Bunny didn't want to fly at those in those days. He yeah. still didn't want to fly. Yeah, so remember. we yeah. enticed him with more money. You know, we pay you 25 grand back in 1994 was a lot of money and still a lot of money, but it was a lot of money back then. And they paid him that same much because I did the contracts. I saw the okay, contract. Okay, okay, I see what so, I'm saying. Yeah. So the contracts were combined. Two shows were combined. And so the um, the promoter in Los Angeles, we started hearing rumors like a week before that they, our show was never going to happen. Mm. And so we didn't understand what they were trying to do, but we had some very important people call us and say, your show's not going to happen. No, they were sabotaging his show so that he wouldn't get in in time to come do our show on Sunday. I mean, on Saturday. Our show was on Saturday. So Bunny needed to fly in on Thursday. And they and they, it was a lot of problems. But nevertheless, the show didn't go on for anybody because once... Um, the politics got involved and I explained it to Jabi. I'm like, well, fine, you want to come do the show. They need to give you another $25,000 because it's contracts for $50,000 for the whole weekend. Yeah. And then the guy, and when Bunny heard all of that and really understood what was happening, he didn't come to do the show because they couldn't honor the entire contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were going to, and he had already gotten his big deposits. So he, they, they broke the contract. So yeah. then we rebooked him for the month later in Berkeley. And that's when I learned how to do the visas myself. Okay. Because I didn't have to reply, re, re, um, rely on somebody else to do it. Do I it, learned yeah. how to do it. Yeah. And I got, we hired somebody. They showed me how to do it. Once they showed me how to do it, I knew how to do it forever. Yeah. And I've been doing them since 1994. 
And I've done them for a lot of different artists all over the years. And then the promoters in California who wanted Bunny would come to me and ask me to do like Carol Bruno at Reggae on the River. The first time I did I his, I did. Bruno. Of yeah. course, she love you. Yeah. So yeah, she's gone now. But she, but she brought Bunny and she called and said, Tula, I want you to come and help me do this. Yeah. And I didn't really know her that well, but she saw that we brought him and she was like, no, I have to have him on my show. So she had him the following year. So so by doing the visas for the artist, it was strictly to just make sure the artists got here and were able to perform yeah. and to bring the culture to and keep bringing the culture. It was because it was a barrier. It was a barrier to artists and it still is a barrier today to artists. You can walk across the border in the United States, go get set up. They'll give you a thousand dollars a month, give you a place to live, give you an apartment, do all this stuff if you're illegal but then on the backs of artists that want to come and perform and do it right, they charge you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm. So it's about the system is not balanced. It's broken. The, we all know that. It's, that's uh, the biggest yeah, thing yeah, in yeah. the world right now is the immigration system. But everywhere. It, it come like you play two roles most of the time, yeah. like road management and getting the visa. Right. I just which, I do which everything. Which one you prefer? Which one you prefer? Well, what happened was, is I preferred to do the um, artist management, but to tell you the truth, um, we all know that when you're doing artist management, working with artists, things can happen and you are out of your control. Yeah, and yeah. so you can spend six months, eight months trying to put together a tour and it falls apart. You can spend a lot of energy up front and not get paid. Yeah, 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 yeah. so your time becomes... Um, it, 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 you, you could do that only so many times and you just get discouraged, right? Mm. But when you're trying to work on business parts, visas where you are control of every aspect of it yeah. and nobody, you don't have to rely on anybody. You know how to do it. You, it's like your taxes. Yeah. You know how to do taxes for somebody. They pay you. You get your money. You help. The, you make you make it possible. You still have the same goodwill. You make it possible for the artist to go and perform and come to the United States. Yeah. And you make it possible for their band and everyone to eat, you know, the uh, band, the whoever's involved. And yeah. then the promoters want those artists. They want to, they want to get access to them. So then you're providing a service to the promoters. To the, uh, all right. So let me ask, you know, we could get into what we're saying. Oh, tell maybe an artist are listening right now and they might say, what well, that artist, they get these are for artists and thing. What it take for you take up the case of an artist to get a visa fee. What, what you need to do and what you do. Okay. So there's um, different types of visas um, that an artist um, <clears throat> can get. There's entertain entertainment visas for, sing for artists. There's one that's a, called an O artist, an O, an o level visa, O1B. And there's also a P for a group. So if you're a solo person, such as yourself, you would go for an O visa. And that is a visa that requires you to be internationally, extraordinarily uh, talented. And a P visa is for a group. And that's a group that's, let's say, any group that's that's made up of all the members. No, there's not one lead singer, one like lead third person. World. Yeah, like third world. Yeah. yeah, so exactly. So they would go on a P visa. So the O visas are the most highly coveted visa because the, the visa is uh, for three years. The P visa is only for one year. So that requires you to refile every year if you're a group. Really? All right, make ask you, stick up in. I didn't get that O1 visa, but... The O-1 visa, can the one with the O-1 visa carry a ban separate yes. from himself? Yes, because then they, they file for the O-1 artist, the solo artist, yes. and then they have to file an O-2 for all of the other one. support asks. Okay. So there's they're called essential support personnel. Okay. That could be managers. That could be your band. That could be any number of types of... Um, your engineers, your sound men, mm. your hype men, your side acts, your, your back singers, your wife, your, 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 your backup friend. singers. Your no, they're on a P. <laughs> they're on a P. The wife is on a P three. I'm sorry, on an O three, yeah. and that's a different one for the wife and the and your children. That's an O an O three. Oh, yeah? Yes, there's an O one, an O two, and an O three. 
So the O2 is a petition that you have to file for all of the people. And you can put security person. I put flag people, flag men. I put um, a variety of acts, but that a variety of people who support the act. Yeah. But you have to be able to uh, explain that, defend that, and put it together in a way that makes sense. So you, you cannot you just put, explain it. I yeah, you have to. I have to be able to. I, you tell me these are your people. Yeah, you yeah, tell yeah. me what your what people do, yeah. and I have to make sure that they actually do those. Yeah. And then you have to sometimes have testimonies for them. You have to have bios for them. You have to have, you can't just put their name down and then send it in. You have to show that these people actually do what they do for at least one year mm -hmm. and that they're related to this artist, that they yeah. work with this artist. Yeah, yeah. So you, so there's a lot of paperwork for each person that, and you put in the O1 for the main person and then you put in the O2 and the O2 goes together. There are two petitions and they go in. And if you're doing a for a group, it's a P1 for a group or a P1S, which is PS for support. S stands for support. And then there is also a P3. Now, what if you are an artist and you're not the level of an O1 artist? You don't have Grammys. You don't have um, awards from Europe. You don't have awards from IRAMA. You don't have any awards so that's the one key thing with the O1. They have to be on that level to be able to have awards. If you don't have awards, then they will put you, if you're just starting out, maybe you've only been in the business for four years and you would go and you don't have any real heavy commercial. You don't have um, big, you're not on billboards. You're not on all these so big. So the farm, them actually ask, have you ever gotten an award in America? And yes. It yeah. to that? Yes. Yeah, I can ask. No, no, they ask you all of that. No, it's at there's there's um, so the thing is is there's different criteria that they look for. Yeah, yeah. And there's uh, seven criteria. The first criteria is: Do you have any award from a credible, uh, yeah. a credible a source? Yeah. In in wherever it is, if you don't have that, then the other six criteria you have to meet three out of those six criteria and you have to be able to meet it un it, it, you have to prove that you can meet this high level yeah, of yeah, what yeah. they're saying. Uh, tell me and, rest of them, on the, the criteria there. Well, I'm going to pull it up on my computer because okay. it's um it's So you say when I the criteria when I get is visa, we just get visa for everybody, same visa. What do you mean? Say that again? No, when we use when we use it, when we use it to enough with no ban. Right. We used to get visa for each man, but in that no level. It was no, levels visa. It was just Well, they used to be so they used to oh, so things back in like the nineties, a promoter could say, I'm doing a festival and I want to get a visa for these people to come in for three months or two yeah. months, and they'd give them two or three months so they could work all summer. Yeah. And so they, so they would let all, they'd let multiple acts be on one visa back in those days. Yeah. But then there were, and I can't, I don't know the story, and I'm not going to call the artists that did this, but because I wasn't involved in it, but some artist would put a lot of people on the visa. I mean, some people would put the um, promoters or whoever, they put people on the visa that were really not related to the artist. Yeah. So when they would go up for their inter interviews, yeah. if they didn't make it, the U.S. Uh, embassy would be like, well, how how is this even put together? It would be a flimsy petition that got through. Yeah. And when they do the interviews at the U.S. embassy in Jamaica, which everyone has to be interviewed, they started to understand that there were too many people and too many, you know, somebody's mom and somebody's uncle and yeah, this yeah. and that. And, and so most this, of them are run after. What's well, yeah, they, that's a whole nother piece of it. But <laughs> but there was too many people on there that weren't really in the band. Real, It wasn't real business. Yeah, it right. was a way for people to be able to use the visas to get go out of the, yeah, to go for it, right? Yeah. So then they every year they just started to refine it, refine it, refine it to the point where... An artist cannot combine two two artists. If you have one, I'm not calling names, but if you have one artist that's a singer and has a separate entire career from another artist, 
then they can't, when you try to put them on the same visa, they're going to tell you they have to have their separate visas. Okay, the artists. That the artists will have to have a separate visas exactly. in their own name and their own crew yeah. under them. You cannot combine them okay. unless they are, I'll, just, I'll call this name out, like Michigan and Smiley. Yeah. Everybody knows that that is a duo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they would have to, to be, those two people would be on an O one one together. Okay. But if you have several artists that are like, I don't want to say names, but let's yeah. say you have a female artist, a male artist, and then another female artist over here, and they're all touring together, they all have to have their separate visas. Okay, but kind of as artists. Yes. Yeah, they should all have their separate visas. So, yeah, so unless no unless they record that. together. If huh? they record together, one of them's going to be an O, and the other one has to take this be on the O2. Mm -hmm. So one of them will be the O, oh, the lead uh, lead singer yes. or the lead artist. Yeah. Then they could add them to the O2. But as you can see, people don't want to do that because they because you're supposed an O2 is support O2. Um, OK, I'm getting a little bit jumping around here. But anytime you have an artist that is an O1 visa and he has O2 um, staff, let's say staff working with them. Uh, They're supposed to only go to the U.S. on that visa to work for that O-1. Them can't go to another Art, they can't, they're not supposed to work with other artists. Okay. If they, if they arrive and they... Work with Muta. Muta might have to work with yes. continuously. Yes, because when they get to immigration, yeah. if they ask them, what are you doing here? And they say... I'm going to go to this festival to work tomorrow and they go in and they look and they look on there and they don't see the O one on that festival. They're going to say, who are you working with? Uh -huh. And if that person says, well, I'm going to support this other act, they'll send you right back and cancel your visa. I uh, them, them, uh, them still have this thing where if you apply for the visa, the management or your booking agent, I forget them a string of dates. Itinerary. Validate you. Yeah. The music so, have like give me one year worth of dates and yeah. the, 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 the booking agent put so you're going to be here in that time, there in that time. So yeah, so the itinerary, these visas for P's and ones are itinerary based visas. So you so the it is based on an itinerary. Mm -hmm. Um what are you coming to do to work in yeah. the United States? Yeah. Who is hiring you? Yeah. What are your real, are you working for distinguished companies? Are you working for distinguished um, 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 production? Yeah. Um, those are all of the criteria that fall into what you have to, where, what you have to meet, how you have to be compelled to do these various things that you say you're doing. And all of that has to be reflected on the itinerary. Okay. So the booking agents are great because they actually can say, you know, I'm a, I'm so-and-so booking agency. I've been around, the agency's been around for a number of years and we, we work with all these different venues. So, the, so they, they could call up, you know, venues on the West Coast, the East Coast, everywhere. And then they all write in and say, yes, they're going to hire this person. And then that goes right through very quickly because those are real, real booking agents, booking agent, yeah. real venues, real festivals, real, they're real business. So they actually call the venues. And the booking well, they agent. can. Yeah. They know which ones are real. As opposed to, let me give you an example. If you... Sometimes we have real, we have high level promoters like Live Nation, right? Mm -hmm. Those people, right? We have, then we have other promoters that have been doing shows for years that people, they do do shows at real venues and stuff. But then we have more street level promoters in yeah. reggae. Yeah. Street level promoters in reggae don't have a venue. They don't have a club. They might go to a, um, uh, a uh, community center to do a show or they yeah. might go to a bar restaurant or they might go to a parking lot or whatever. They don't, they're not consistent, but they are a important part of the business because in reggae, everybody doesn't have access venue. to the big, the big regular venues. Yeah. So or they validate them or they validate that. Well, they will fight that. They will look if so, if you send in a, you send in a um, itinerary and it has, it's going to be at this particular bar and they go online and they see it's just a food bar and what they, you you have to defend that you have to show that that place does reggae on a regular basis because we're talking about reggae right we're not talking about soca yeah, we're not yeah, talking yeah. about any you know anything else you have to defend that that is a regular establishment 
that that the artist is going to play at. You cannot just put down anything on an itinerary because they will look at the itinerary. They will if they if you Google it and it doesn't come up looking like an actual nightclub, mm. they're going to say, well, this isn't what is this? It's not a distinguished um, uh, it's not an, um, a venue of a distinguished reputation. And so they will fight you on that. And then they will and they won't they won't give you the visa because it's an itinerary based visa. So they'll say that what you put together is makes no sense. And a lot of people have gotten their visas. Not a lot. But I mean, there are definitely people that I've heard of that didn't get their visas because it wasn't it was a flimsy. It was too flimsy. I think most of them know artists is not established like when when we usually go up on tours, venues we are playing with, a uh, rock band playing at them venue there. So they yes. move, you know, like, you know, some of them venues we used to play, it, right? I, 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 I feel that these artists now, it's just a bridge in a decide say, more put on a show with exactly. them. Exactly. And when them go up there, them get other show. How oh, them do that? How oh, them do that? Well, they so in order to get their visa, some a part of that itinerary has to be solid, yeah. real business and solid. Once you get your visa, as long as you're going up to perform, you can take on other shows because you're still the type of visa that you're getting allows you to take on new new shows or work for other people. To the, the person who no. You can Apply still, that person who applied for you depend, and let's say if they're a booking agent. So you've got booking agents, you've got artist management companies, you have, um, you have um, 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 nonprofits that do cultural exchange yeah, programs yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have venues, that kind of thing. So you have several, that's all those people do different things, right? So if you have someone like for my company, what I do is I try, I'm an artist management company. I do visas for the artists that I sign money, a management money, company yeah, yeah. and I allow them to go and work. Yes. And they can, I don't micromanage what they do. With other, I, with other promoters. Yes. yes. I make sure, as long as they are not, as long as they are upstanding, they don't have any bad history. I monitor what, I monitor what they do with the people that we set up the visa with. But however, for three years, I don't mind if they go out and work and do what they need to do. That's why they're got, that's why they came because they want to have a visa to work. And as long as they're not going to go be, work as a nurse or go work as a, yeah, yeah, as yeah. go work in a restaurant or go do, go try to go do something else on the visa that's going to yeah. come back that says you. you're not, you, yeah, you're not, you're an artist, you're a singer, you're an a engineer, you're a um, bass player, you're a, Whatever you're doing, that's what you're coming up there to do. If you start doing other stuff, then that's so then, then you jeopardize you, it. Got your book. You're, you're saying for artists, I you're saying go on somewhere, go do something else. No, no, I've been really fortunate, but I don't take on everybody. Go like a streak. I well, I just don't look at people who have problems. I don't work with people. You can tell who has problems. I true, I true. I mean, there's people you people who want you to do stuff with them. Just Google them. Yeah. Oh, that one's been got arrested. Oh, that one you got you've got in an yeah, argument yeah, with yeah, the police. Yeah. Yeah. That one you got, you know. Oh, that one you're smoking weed. Oh, that one you're hanging. You're you're on on the internet with guns. Mm. I mean, those are real cases of people that are here that have gotten. I wouldn't touch them yeah. because all I know is that I would do all this work and then they would get turned down. Yes, yes, yes. Because that you, if you can go Google somebody and find out that they have drama, then so will the officers who look at well, the Matt document. Taylor said, "No, for them artists are right now. You look on YouTube, you see drama like wow." Yeah. And so we don't want that. We want to get we want to promote reggae and we want to continue it in the culture. Yeah. So we want to bring the best representation of artists to the United States. And we you want to take a break? Yeah, we'll take a break. OK, okay. we'll take a break. <laughs> no, no break. No, that is all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So interested, interesting Oh, some youth out there, who's artists now who don't reach a level uh, going out there. I have the criteria. Can I have uh, your pen or your paper right down. Yeah, I have the criteria uh, and I'll read it so that you can they can understand what we're dealing with. All right, go on, man. Sweet, you want me go to on, do it now? Do it. Okay. So for an O one, a qualifying criteria, if you don't have a one time award such as a Grammy, 
etc. Whatever it could be, the Mobile Award. It could be the um, the, uh, oh, wow. the the one from France. It, it could be any of those awards on a high level that you received, right? For your country, or you could Irama. Irama is like ton does a lot of awards. I see him. I know. I see. Him. <laughs> I got one. I got an Irama yeah, yeah, Award yeah, yeah. last last Tur- month. Yeah, I think I have the most. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> so that's so those so if you don't have that, then you must you may submit documentation for at least three of the six criteria. One of the 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 first one is being a lead or starring participant in distinguished productions. That means who you're going you're going to be starring or you're going to be um, the lead of the production. Yeah. You are the headliner yeah. or you are one of the headliners because we do know there could be three headliners on a show one in one night, right? Yeah, yeah. So you've got to either be the starring or lead participant in a distinguished production. The next one is you have to have national or international recognition. And the evidence to show that you have national or international recognition is is usually by critical reviews, critics, people saying Right. That more. writing about your music, not about what kind of car you drive, not about your mom that you took to, to Sunday Mother's Day dinner, not about the baby that you had, not about the fight that you had. All those headlines do not add up to being an artist. Yeah. It has to be about your process, about your accomplishments, about how just about, about your music. Yeah. And, and I have a, I have to say something about that in a minute. But that would be. You'd have to prove that with major newspapers and the newspapers have to be real newspapers like the like the Gleaner, like the um, Observer, um, like uh, Billboard, like Vibe, like yeah. all those magazines, those kind of things, trade, major trades, major magazines and other publications. And the circulation of all of those magazines have to be provided. You have to they have to you can't just say, hey, there's a little magazine blog, yeah. somebody that's doing it and he's got 100 people and he's been around for a, zero, a zillion <laughs> years. That's not going to qualify. Yeah, for work. Yeah. And the other thing while I'm here, I don't know if there's any journalists out there listening to me, but I've been saying this to people personally uh, in some of the journalists that I work with or that I encounter. The art, the articles that you write for the artists in, in Jamaica, and also this is a trend, it's just, it's drama. It's not helping to make the music and make the artists stand up as. What is a drama? Uh, what do you mean? They write drama. They the kind of things like when they if they interview you, and you're just talking about yourself. That's not a critic. That's not somebody. That's not another music professional talking about you and interviewing and talking about your process and your accomplishments and your career. You're talking about yourself. That doesn't count mm. as that doesn't count as news. Mm. That's self promotion. Uh, and you can't show them people. And so when you say when they when you show it, no, even if it makes it in the newspaper and it's an interview about you talking about you, oh, that's no, not no, what no, they no, want. No, that would be, that, that would be. <laughs> yeah, it has to be something. It has to be a somebody. Review. A, a review. review, yes, a critical review of you by a real journalist, mm. not about your car, not about your argument, not about who's, who's upset and who's fighting and who's on TV and who's not. All of that stuff that we get in current magazines and, and newspaper about artists, it might make the, the audience feel good this reading it, but it doesn't do anything in terms of move the music and move the uh, profession forward. Yeah. You know, you're not going to see that kind of stuff in Billboard. You're not going to see that kind of stuff in any of the major. Mo- not. Yeah, you're not. not. So if if Jamaican journalists could move the move it up higher, set the bar higher for their their um, their their um, the articles and things that they do on the artist and dig deeper to give it. I mean, it's nothing wrong with talking about the first one or two lines about an artist, something fun or something characteristic about him, but get to the deeper part about the artist. Because when we need to do visas and look back at the artist, and if they don't have a proper, any proper resume, you give me 10 articles and it's all fluff. It doesn't even work. Yeah. It's been rejected. They yeah. will reject it. And so the artist will not get their visa based on you can't prove that they have any Good critic, yeah, yeah, yeah. any good, um, any national or international recognition. 
Okay. So that's so now we uh, I said we've done the first one was lead starring participant in a distinguished production. The second one was national or international recognition. The third one is a lead starring or critical role. And that is seems like the first one, but this is now the person. So you got one you've got to talk about distinguished productions. That means you're going to go work for a big like Live Nation or you're going to go work for some big company, some big festivals that they have on the in, in the United States. Yeah. You're going to be there. And then the other one is now saying, well, what is your role going to be? Are you going to be a star in that? So there's that kind of goes back and forth. And then I'll go down to the next level of um, then there's the commercial and critical um, acclaimed success that is based on how popular you are commercially. Mm -hmm. So you can have, you can be maybe have one or two hits, but basically you don't have a record contract. You don't have um, any, um, you don't have any real setup. Um, your business, your business model is not really set up. You got one hit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, so you've got to show them, wait a minute, I've got, I've got tons of hits. I've got tons of songs. I've got lots of stuff. I've, you, you're showing them your business. You're critically acclaimed. If you, somebody Googles you, they can see yeah. that you've got all these videos, uh, you all get, this, yeah, 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 yeah. you're on Sign every platform. Got company or something like that. Yes. You're on every platform. You're, 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 you're established. You're yeah, an established yeah, artist. Yeah. So that's kind of like one other thing. And then there's also significant recognition now this one is kind of easier to get because but this one this one um the minister ministry of culture helps a lot with because you mean in Jamaica, yes Babsy Babsy Grange. Grange, yeah their her office will help an artist with this um and they she they've done like interview not interviews but seminars and stuff like that to show artists and then if the artist is paying attention they need to listen to what's being said with the government because the government is now helping artists yeah. get to the point where they can start to have more recognition. So this is called significant recognition. And it says that you have to show evidence of that the beneficiary, the artist, it has a um, has achievements recognized by organization, critics, government agencies and other recognized experts in the industry. So that would mean so Babsy Grange's office actually has you register mm -hmm. as an artist, which all artists should register. They should be registered with all the agencies, with um, Jaria, with any with any agency that is in a, in Jamaica, they should register as as that because those people will write letters to the government on your behalf to show that you are a recognized artist in the United in um sorry in your country. Mm -hmm. So so um so Babsy's office will do that and then and then provided that everything you really are you register you have you present yourself there's a lot of stuff that you have to do that they ask you to do and then they will write a letter on your behalf stating that you are recognized in the national registry as this particular artist I think when I, when I was given money like 5000 I think I all about loaded ways up when I think it's Etana was up for the 5000 What's the 5,000? Five, when I go on tour, the government. Oh, yeah. Well, the, that's a different thing. Five, she has some grants. Yes. And she I, has I some touring grants. I Jay was involved with it, getting the money too, but people see that as, you know, weird, that like the government are gay. Well, I mean, I thought it was support. weird. Let me tell you what, how I met some of the, the Bayesian artists, like Alison Hines is one of my clients, and I have a lot of artists from, I've had Trinidad and other things. The one country, Mia Motley, when she was the minister of culture, I met her. We did a tour in uh, 98 In we did the Spirit of Unity tour out of California and it went all around and we ended it in Barbados. We They joined Barbados, came with money and put people on the tour and brought artists, her whole, she, they brought everybody from that was there 
Um, I can't even remember everyone's. I'm not going to go deep, but but anyway, but Barbados takes money and puts it into artists on tours. Took them to um, meet them. Took spent money. I took them. Yeah, meet them was. Uh, um, I don't know if meet them still happens now, but I don't think so. Yeah, but meet them was where Europe. You met Europe. All the artists and the Caribbean artists would go, and it was a music conference uh, just yeah. to meet all of the bookers and people in Europe. Sort of like South by Southwest in. In the United States now. So they would take their artists and do showcases and all of that, you know. So, I mean, and so under and they did. So they put a lot of money. You could get grants. They would put you on tour. They would. And I thought, well, why isn't Jamaica doing that? I mean, this is like there's not even there weren't even that many artists considered in Mm -hmm. Barbados compared to the hundreds of artists in Jamaica that needed that kind of help. But now they are doing that. They've been doing, she's been doing that because she's got a music background. The minister has a music background. So she's been doing that for many, many years. And so she understood how to keep moving this forward. So, and, and, and I think it's good. So I would say if you want to get back to, you know, the visa thing, if you need to get, if you're looking to get a visa in the future and you want to, you're, you're doing a lot of work on your own, your management or whatever is helping you go and register with the minister of culture, gender, sports. Well, I can't say the whole title, Mm -hmm. but go to that office and register yourself and do what you need to do. You can just send them an email. They will, um, Abigail, uh, roll. She can send her email She'll give you the information, you go through the information, and then you become somebody that they now understand and you're recognized and they can help yeah, you, yeah. right? And they're, and yeah, they have grants. They have stuff that they're working and developing for artists. So you guys d- pay attention to what the uh, government is doing because they are trying to step it up. Okay. You know, to help. They've been stepping it up. The very last other thing after getting significant recognition is remuneration. Remuneration is showing your high salary, showing how you're going, how your money structure is set up. So if you've been recording, you've been getting royalties, you've been an artist for many years, you have documentation that you should be saving. If you have a publishing deal and you're getting royalties, save your statements. If you have signed a contract with an agency, save your statements. If you are, whatever you're doing to show how your income, what your income is, As an artist, keep those documents and put them away and save them because you need to show that down the road. Maybe you have to pay taxes in Jamaica. So you need you should be able to keep your your money and everything straight. So those are things that you have to deal with. Significant recognition from government agencies. Your ta- you know, your money, how you right, have hold, you- hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to take the first break. I take a break and come forward. Okay. Cutting it. Yes, we're going through the PSAs. I hope they the one, the young, especially the younger artists they have ambition for go tour America. The sister who have here, Tula, is very experienced in what she's saying, if you listen to what she's saying. And, you know, it's very important that we do this because we know it's a whole heap of man get Lego. When we say Lego now, he feels the same. can just throw a man like first time when he want to go away. You have 10 men and five of them now do nothing. They want to run away. It's not the same way like or it's not it's not how it's going out this time, you know see it. Yeah, have, have something to show them why he's part of the entourage. You know see it. And really and truly it's not that you can't go around them still, you know. Because you can see a man is your cook. And you show the same about a restaurant at Jamaica. Well it's really run where my child run with still. So <laughs> there's many ways for to go around it, but Legitimacy is one that is very important, you know, legitimacy. Well, Tula. Um, I would say that some of the artists now are putting less and less people on their visas because they are they realize that, the, that they need to get business done. Yeah. So they're not trying. It used to be maybe a reggae band would have nine people to 12 people. Um, and then and then some reggae bands will put 18. They put more people and they have the right to put more people. I mean, there's people that have 25 to 30 people as their entourage on their on their visas. 
that is possible to do that, but it all has to be explained. You have to be able to, um, if it's if somebody if they ask you about it, you have to be able to give them a compelling argument that those people are essential mm-hmm. to the artist, yeah, yeah. and so that's very important. You want to be able to, so you try, you know, you don't want to deal with. Um, if you mess up and do something on a level where you have people on your visa and they're not really they're um, they're doing stuff, they're running their own program and doing whatever they want to do and they're not taking it seriously, then you're going to have a problem. But mostly uh, mostly people are concerned about that because they want to be able to have their visa. It's a privilege to come in. It's a privilege yeah. to be able to work and make money, build your career. Yeah. And just this one visa for one year or three years, you want to do these every every three years. You're going to do these on and on and on until you get to the point where either you're going to migrate 100 percent to the United States or you're going to continue doing these. Some I could tell you some artists that have been getting these visas for over 30 years. Because they don't want to migrate to the United I States. I like it, bro. I, I, I get your visa there for over for, 30 years. Yes, exactly. And I know how work I believe. Yeah, no, it's always a part of your business structure. Your management structure, your business structure, you just have to make sure you have it together so you can do these things yeah. in a regular way. You have certain freedom. Right. So you can go and you can work and you can build your career in and on um, in get real business and real, you know, make real money. Mm-hmm. In the United States, it's you've got to have it. You can't work without it. All right. You know, run down there. The points, them, so whatever. there's so there's some fees, a lot of fees. It's very expensive. Um, I tell everybody that it's not cheap. It's not, and if you are um, don't have a sponsor, if you don't have money yourself, like to pay, if you don't have a sponsor or a um, U.S employer that's going to pay the fees to get you there because they have a tour or they have some major contract or work and they're this is part of the you know part of the getting you there has to be paid it's very expensive to do this so you have to pay attention the fees so in you're going to do a if you do a o1 or a p or whatever you're going to do one petition one petition right now, it used to be as of two months ago to file it as a regular filing, which means can take them four months to approve it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So four, now? Up to, yeah. It takes it. You're not, you have to pay for a rush if you want you it to be done. You mean the artist visa, the old one. An you artist visa. Five more, four months. If you, this is right. Re- so there's regular processing and there's premium processing. Yeah. Regular processing two months ago was $460. As of April 1st, the $460 went to $1,055. So it went from $460 to $1,055. U.S. U.S. Now you need two petitions because you're going to bring in yourself and you're going to bring in your band. So right now you have to pay $1,055 twice. And then if you want it to be premium processed, so which would gives them 15 business days to look at it. So if you have to be on tour in two months, you got to do premium processing. Right, back up, little, back up, little. If the artist a carry a band, make up of four people. Right. I have to pay $1,000 for each of the person. No, no, the petition. Oh. So let's look at, the petition is the actual... The, the document that goes to the government. Yeah, yeah. Ask, say, say, oh, uh, so there's a one uh, petition, two petition. There's an O1 petition and an O2 petition. Okay, yes. The O2 is all of your people. It could people be 20 people. Know, okay. It could be up to 25 people on, on yeah, one O2 yeah. petition. Up to 25 people. Yes. If you had 26 people, you have to do two. Okay. The next, the 26 so person 25 has to be... 25 is the limit. 25. 25 is the limit on the O2 petition. Yes. And on the O one one would be the one person, All right, the lead one, artist. Suppose it's a group. Then it would be the group. The O-1. You no, know, then a group would be on a P. The okay, group would be okay. on the P. And that's a different, that's a All different. Right, so get it right. The O one one is a singular artist. Like, yeah, like a, like, let's yeah. say like, let's say like, um, let's say like uh, uh, Sean Kuti from yeah. Africa. Yeah. One, Sean, one. Sean would be on an O one one. 
Yeah. And then him and his 25 to 50 dancers and singers yeah. and, and, and percussionists and everything and would be on the O2. All right. So the, the, the other one now is a group like you have the, 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 the Abyssinians are. The group. They would be on a, they would be on a P, a P. that P1. P1. If you three, if you had three guys, they would be on a P because they're a group. Yes. Yeah, but the body's not recognized as a group. The, the group, the band would be on a PS for support. Okay, okay. Unless okay. they want to make one of those guys the lead singer. All right. So when you pay the petition, what else you have to pay again now? So you have to pay for the petition yeah. uh, to be, um, you have to pay for union letters. You have to, you can't just come to the United States and say, I'm going to work. You have to go to the union and the union has to say, Yes, okay, I'm going to look at your petition and I'm going to give you a letter and approve you on this letter saying that there's nobody else in the United States that can do what you do. Yeah. So very, you're doing reggae. Yeah, now they have white reggae. Well, um, they reggae. have American well, reggae, well, reggae bands. Come from, so. Yeah, but, it's, but they can't say you can't, everybody has to come in from Jamaica. They can't say, oh, well, we already have our reggae bands now. We don't need you, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't do that. Yeah. But they, but you have to also prove union, all the people on your thing, there's different unions. There's a union for the, the musical artists. There's a union for the business people. There's a union for the technical people. There's a union for, so there's a union for everything. So you have to get all the union letters for the people that you're bringing in. So who's soliciting these unions? The management? The person who's doing the visa. Oh, you? Yeah. Okay. The person who does the visa does takes, they have to do all of this oh, work. union thing. Think, yeah, you get, okay. to, you get okay. the unions. And then so the unions say, okay, fine, you guys can come to the United States. So then the uh, people in the United States at the um, United, at the USCIS um, will go and they will say, okay, fine. You got, you've met this standard. You've met this as the, um, it's the United States citizen right, and in, immigration in, service. In. We have to take another break. Okay. So I know this is a lot of stuff. When the break done, we can have like a length of time. So we can take the break. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we're talking to Tula. The, we will call it now Third World Productions. Third World Music Group. And Third I, World I Music do group artist group. management and I do immigration. Going through the pieces with us, we could understand it clearer, the intentions. We'll talk about um, the, 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 the tears of the, um, the different the status yes, filing the different status. And you say one is how much you say two hundred how much? Okay, so we were talking about the O petitions the petition. and the P petitions. Those are the artist petitions, and the O petition. We were talking about how much it cost to bring in an artist from a um, to to, and so the O petition basically cost one thousand. 55. Oh, no. You're saying change, now, no. Yeah, now, as of April 1st, you want to do a petition for an artist to come in, an 01 artist to come in. The regular filing fee is going up. It's very expensive. And it went up to $1,055 from $460. Yes. Right? And it's the individual artist. And that's for the O1 artist, the yeah. one person, his petition, the, yeah. her petition by herself. Then if you want to do the O2, the artist is going to bring in their manager, yeah. the, the sound, the band, and all the different roles to support their act when they're working in the United States on tour. You have to file a second petition, which is an O2, and that at cost again $1,000. $55. For each person? Out of no, just for the petition. The petition is a document. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So this, so you're filing two documents. Okay. For that, for that artist and their staff to come to go to the United States. Right. Behind that document, think of it like um, a tax return. Yeah, everybody does tax returns. You have to fill. There's all types of schedules and attachments and background and receipts and things that you have to have attached to that one piece of paper at the top, right? So that's what you're talking about. You've got a form. It's a, called the I one, uh, the I one twenty nine form, and that's what you're filing. Yeah. Two of those, okay? Now, if th it'll take them up to four months, if you do not pay for premium processing. 
Premium processing is something they offer you on top of the normal filing fee to get you to get them to look at yours awesome. within three weeks. Oh, yeah. Right. Three weeks. Yeah. So but guess how much that costs now? It used to cost. I mean, back in the day, it used to cost 500. Then it went up to 1,000. Then it went to 1,500, uh, 1,200. Then it went to, and now it is $2,805, and five, $2,805 for each petition. So that means you have to pay $2,805 for each one. For So twice, you have to pay it for twi twice because you got two petitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you're a solar artist, why use other people ban? If you're a solar artist and you're just using a U.S.-based band, yeah, you can use a U.S.-based band. You don't have to bring your band. Yeah, so you don't, so what I say, you, it, it going to cost you, the individual artist, two thousand dollars. A thousand five, a thousand, um, no, a thousand fifty for the yeah, yeah. twenty eight oh five, two thousand eight hundred and five dollars yeah. to get it to be expedited Very quick yeah to get it to be premium processed expedited rushed yeah. so that you can get it done within three weeks three weeks because it's 15 days but it's 15 days work days monday through friday they don't work on the weekends yeah. so that's through that's three weeks and basically these are the last three years if you get the visa, yeah, yeah it'll, it'll the be visa. three years. Yeah. So all that money. Now, that's just the fees. Yeah, me know, me know, me know, that's yeah. not the that's not how much it costs for somebody to process it. That's yeah, yeah. so I mean, I hear people paying 20, 20, 30,000 dollars to get their artist visas set up. And I, zeros. I'm serious. 20 thousand US dollar. Yes. To do all of this, this the fees to pay the attorneys to bring in to get everything done. To, yeah, it it could be that expensive. Yes, there's, it could be very expensive. It depends on who you who you're working with. No, the I main, why I would if I want to work carry them band. It's not only the promoter no want carry the band. It's the artist. No, because it's yeah, it's very expensive. It's very expensive mm -hmm. to do it. And if you don't have, why do you want to bring a whole village with you when you don't really have the work to support <laughs> them? Yeah. So why do that? You know, why do you give everybody a visa and then you're then they're looking at you? It's like it's hard for I'm going to say this as a manager for artists. It's very hard to have a band that you support and take everywhere. It's expensive. It's astronomical to fly, to put you up in a hotel, to give you part per diems, to give you a salary and to actually be an honest artist working and not send you home broke. All right, I'm going to tell you, you why. Know, so because I, I, I prefer to carry a band. Because when you're in the band work for years, I really have a mistake nobody don't know because the band is so intertwined into where you are, though. Right. So, for instance, now, me, and my, me and my band, it's very difficult for me to go somewhere and not carry them. As Wait. a... As a Muta Baruka and rather right. than just Muta Baruka, right? Right. It adds me not carry them because the way me and them mesh, if they all me miss the line them. Yeah. The keyboard just the keyboard just know say me miss the line and them just come in with the line and me just remember right. it right away. Right. So me prefer when me have my band, but you have some people well fortunately for me, that me go to them and me say, Is either you take me with the band or without the band? Right. So if you can afford it, you take the band. If you can't, you say without the band. Right. Some people just love when I come by myself. Right. Because I'm going to read poetry and talk to the people. The man, but really. you're, you're a very unique artist because yeah, yeah. you can do anything on the stage. And then you and your band's very unique because they don't just do regular rhythms. No, they no, have, no, they no, do, yeah. they go everything from reggae to jazz, jazz to yeah. classical. They do everything. So yeah. they're very... Um, it's a nobody can do, you don't have people a pickup band that you can get that yeah. that well versed. So you do need your band out on the road with you when you're doing stuff for sure. But a lot of artists they are playing straight reggae. So there's a lot of people out Can't there. They can yeah, um, yeah, East Coast band, West Coast band, New York band, my you know Miami band. A lot of every the, tone them going on that different at, band. Well, I mean they could carry one band out of Miami and do the whole East Coast run, and they can do another band out of the on U.S. The on Coast. the West Coast and do a whole West Coast run. And it just is more cost effective. 
Yeah, you know, for yeah. for the artist because he's not paying for a plane, she he or not playing for plane tickets, and you know, and then they don't have to pay. They some of these artists they work in that area that the, the uh, musicians could go right back home or drive themselves home or whatever, so they don't have to deal with all of the lodging fees. So that could add up to ten thousand dollars easily. The plane tickets to bring a band to the United States. Yeah, yeah. All right, make a you. When you pay all of them money there. It's not a guarantee either. No, I know, mean, but yeah, them can't deny it, right? They couldn't deny it. And you don't get back the money. You don't get back Neither anything. Neither from the person like you. No, no, because so the person who does the visa and and they need to. So this is what I encounter. I ask the um, artist and I keep drilling them and drilling them and drilling them and saying, you, you haven't met this criteria. You haven't met the international recognition you haven't met this uh, this particular um, we need all these expert opinions we need I, there's a lot of work you have to do you haven't met this give me this give me that give me this give me that and they're like well how isn't this haven't i given you enough no you haven't because if i don't feel comfortable in with what i have to present to them i can't argue it mm -hmm. i can't defend it and if you send in something that's flimsy to them they will pick up on it immediately and send you back a list of 20 questions that they want you to add, take another three weeks or four weeks of pulling more information together. So you do double work. So the best thing you have to do is just when somebody asks you, prepare you, tell you what you need. Some I've had artists call me like two years in advance and say, hey, how can I get my visas? And so I look at their situation and I'll say, you don't have this, you don't have that, you don't have this, you don't have that. Can you work on those things in the next year to two years to get to the point where when somebody looks at you, we know exactly who you are. And then then you can file. But if you want to file now, you're not qualified. You're not qualified to file. And I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time, and I certainly don't want to hold on to people's money, hard-earned money, uh, to, uh, to just take their money and then file something, and then they don't get what they did. You know, at the end, I basically have a good, very good record of what I do, and I work with people. And there's, I won't call who I work with in, here in Jamaica, but I work with people who have a very good record. Mm -hmm. and, and taking, once I get you your approval notice, then I, rela then I have another person I refer you to, and then they work their magic on you. And then you get your appointment, and you get through, and you understand what you're going to need mm -hmm. and everything, and you get through. And the bottom line is you get that passport stamped, and you can come to the United States and start working. So that's the only objective. And the, and for me, the objective is, is you can come and represent reggae in the United States. And I have done as much as I can do my career. I could walk away from this and not have to deal with it, but there's nobody around that will pick up this and help. And so I wish there was somebody around that's trustworthy and committed to the artist and and straight forward that does the work without all of the you know just do the work and get the people through so that they can come up and represent because the more the less Jamaican artists that come to the United States the more people are other people are filling those gaps yes yes and that people especially ex well they're taking the indigenous the authentic people are not getting their share of what they built mm. Because visas are a as big are a barrier. Big problem. They're a barrier. So there are people that will help, and there are people I know promoters that will be like I can call them and say they'll write letters for an artist even if they're not going to hire them because they want to keep the authentic Jamaican music oh, going. Yeah. They will say they'll say don't worry, just I'll, I'll write, I'll I'll work with you All on right, your visa. We never hear about you. You you are you are actually saying that a lot of the things that stagnate or make stunted the reggae music and the reggae artists is because of the visa problem. Right. Because they can't come into the, or they've had visas. Let me say this. Even if you've had a visa before and you and you come back and you kind of like, wow, that was, I didn't make the money or I did, my tour didn't go well or whatever, you still need to keep up your visa. Yeah. You still need to keep up your career. 
because if you just take like a break for too long, when you come back to try to get the visa again, they're going to say you're not relevant. It doesn't matter that you had one, two, three, oh, ones Same in the right. past. Right. They want to look at what you've done no. for the last three years. Right. When you're filing in 2024, they want to know what you did in 2023, right. 2022, 2021. There is an actual, there was a case against the United States government, the a visa against Church of Scientology and them that's made this happen where the, they, they sued the government saying, we've been getting these visas for I don't know how long. Why are we having to prove this? And they lost the okay. case. The Church of Scientology lost the case. So every time you get a, a question about this, you say, I already had this visa before um, when they send you back a list of why they're asking you they tell you well we need more information they they quote this particular case saying that based on this case it doesn't matter that you had this visa before you have to prove every time that you are qualified for this same visa unless you have a one-time award like a grammy or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. If every time, if unless you had those one or two time, you have these big awards, you don't have to prove so much. But if you don't have that big award, then you have to prove who you are to them every three years or every year. And that means you have to have, be still recording, still doing the music, still having, you know, a business, real business. So these are things, there's challenges. And I just look at it like these are barriers that they're putting up so that other people, they don't have to bring people in to do uh, to the United States. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like, um, remember, every time we get a new president in the United States, they get new people working in the visa departments. Uh, 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 uh. So when we had, I remember, you know, Clinton, George Bush, um, and how and different 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 things had had changed over the years when Obama came in it was different and then when 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 Trump came in it was very different and then, so we didn't used to get these they call them requests for evidence so you'd send in a petition it would look good everything's in there whatever you put in all the different sections to show those criteria that i read off and they send you, uh, everyone was getting these requests for evidence, requests for evidence, no matter all the attorneys, everyone was just getting them because they were slowing down the process. And so that meant that you have to actually do twice as much work to mm -hmm. answer these things and to get them more, give them more information, more information, more information. It slowed down the process. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned this. If he comes now. back in. Huh? If he ever comes back in. I mean, Trump, Trump, Trump. Trump, yeah, I, I tell everyone, get your stuff But you don't look like you don't want to put him in the back. Look here. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned this thing because even myself, sometimes you live among certain people and I say, Mota, you can't carry me, you go going to fire it. <laughs> and I say, Bridget, you know, like first time, you know, because I'm going to tell you, say, you have to tell me you want to go fire with me, but guess what? Who are going to pay for your, part, your, your visa? Because I'm not going to take out the money and pay for your visa for you to go fire and go run away. Mm -hmm. So it kind of get that stunted now. Because only a man that really love for carrying bridge and go fire in. Yeah. Even though I'm not in bridge and go run away, but if you go fuck out the money, if you go pay for your bridge, it's another problem because maybe I'm not even making the amount of money. Where am I going far in? Far. Yeah. You know, so I, well, I, I, I it, guess them, them cock up that whole day. Well, I would say that any artist that wants to come to get their visas, they're going to have a structure. They got to, even if you don't have a lot of shows, you can go do all the promotion. You can go to the festivals. You can go to a lot. You have to, I mean, the music business is one of the most expensive businesses in the world. Mm -hmm. An artist needs to have sponsors. They need to have benefactors. They need to have angel investors. They need people to invest in them. So you're not going to be able to do it on your own because it's the most expensive business in the world. I mean, you heard that saying, if you want to make a million dollars in reggae, you got to invest two million mm. to get your, so you're losing a million to get a million back. I mean, it's the most expensive profession in the world. So I always ask the artist who, 
is your sponsor and who is t- who uh, who is going to take care of you and pay for all these things because yeah. they don't understand they just think if i get a visa there's you I have to have it. yeah you have to have a program that's going to work you have to have understanding of how when you get to the united states how are you going to make money how are you going to do promotions how are you going to meet all the people you need to meet where are you going to meet these people you need to just you need to network right so if you're just going to get a visa there are people that have visas and don't go up to the united states they just sit on the visas mm. and that doesn't that's not doing anybody any good either so, so I would say that the visa prices, they, they range on how many people are in your band, yeah. what, what the roles are of the people in your band, and how many petitions you need to file. So if you're just getting one person, one petition, obviously the price is a lot more affordable. And then you have to pay for the visa from the person who have to pay all of them pay for it. You have to pay for the person that does that, and you also have to pay for the person that helps you get your uh, U.S. Embassy appointment. That that because the U.S. Embassy takes two hundred and five U.S. dollars just to give you an, an interview. I right, so tell you, that cost now for uh, the three different tier um, visa them. Practically, including the person. I would say, yeah. I would say, if you were just one person, I'm just estimating because it could, it yeah. just, it's, I can't even, I don't even give people quotes over the, uh, but I would say anywhere from a one person might be close to eight to ten thousand dollars to a group could be up, yeah, uh, yeah, and to a group could possibly be anywhere from fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars, and that's on the low side. And if you're dealing with high profile artists that have like Grammys and have big, big entourages and have big record companies and big attorneys, they usually are going to somebody that the record company um, uh, wants them to work with. Yeah. You now you're talking about 20, 20, you're moving up into 20 or more thousand dollars. MP of feet. Because you're going to, they, because, yeah, the record company is going to take that money back out. Well, um, I tell you, so one time I do a tour on. Big boss and this and that and that and that. And look after when the tour done, Shana can come to me and show me how much money they've spent. For the big, me never really interested to get a big boss thing, but when we had a big boss, it feels so good. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then they show you the bill the accounting at the end. It's like it's, it's like you go into a hospital to have a surgery, and when you come out, they give you the bill big hits bill. the floor. Yeah. The bill hits the floor. It's like six, you know, six feet t- long, <laughs> and you've got they charged you for every single Q-tip. Every single piece every of team, toilet paper, team. every ice yeah. cube that they yeah. was giving you, every you know, every so you're paying, it is all room. listed on there. Yeah. So that's right. how it is, yeah. This is the cutting edge on RFM. We're talking music, we're talking artists, we're talking visa with Tula. We're going to go to the 12 o'clock break. All right. <laughs> Okay, Tula. So we're gonna wrap up now. Yes. Yeah, so why you tell tell us the last? Why tell where you want? Tell me. Okay. Up front, straight up. Straight. So I want you to just, if you want to get into the United States, you want to get your visas, you want to be on that artist level. I want you to just do a few things. Make sure you have your social media top notch. Make sure you have your um, you're on you're selling your music on every platform that there is um, in digital platform, if you will, physical, whatever it is that you have, make sure you have records that you've got all of that. Try to get a music awards or try to get nominated. Work in those areas. Go talk to those people that are doing those things and find out how do you actually even get into that space of what's happening there. Because there are people that work and you've got like Arama, you've got the Caribbean um, music awards, I think, out of um, England. You've got a lot of different platforms. You start looking at that, that those broader things. Get a publicist. Get a decent. Get a few publicists that plan that actually put your stories about you in different papers. You've got to do that. You have to have news. You have to have press articles. You have to have interviews. You've got to have people look, talking, and reading about you. Um, you need to have um, videos. Uh, all of you always love doing videos, but make sure your videos have a lot of, um, of views. Um, and I don't, I'm not trying to say that you're going to use all these fake viewing mechanisms that people do. But you, at the end of the day, you, when you have a lot of videos, 
you, you, you know, that are getting, you know, if you've had a video out for five years and it's got 10,000 views, that's not good. If you had a video out for two or three months and it's got 10,000 views, that looks better. But what they really want to see is 100,000, 200,000, a million videos uh, of view, you know, of, um, of views. So you really have to show that. And then sometimes when you have that kind of videos or those kind of um, numbers, there's st statistics that you can show, your stats to show where those views are coming from. So they could ask you that. Well, where are these? What does this mean? Where is this coming from? So you would be able to do the um, stats behind it, pull it. Whoever's doing your social media can pull it. And so, well, I'm getting all of this out of Europe. I'm getting this out of South America. Oh, uh, every, over in Africa. So you got to show, sometimes you have to show the background of what you're doing. Um, and how you got what you, you, you need to know what you, you need to be thinking completely about the accountability of your music and of what you're doing. Um, and so this makes you have a team. You have to have a team that you work with yeah. because you can't, if you're trying to, trying to do all the creative, you need somebody on your team that can do numbers, somebody on your team that can do good paperwork, you know, so you, you management, you know, several managers or whatever a team, but that's your team that you're working with, right. To help you keep track of how all of these things. And like I said, a publicist is so important because they're going to be able to put your name and your face in front of a lot of promoters, uh, DJs, radio selectors, music executives, record labels, all of that. They're going to see all of that. So yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you need to have a publicist that's seriously working on your behalf. That's the first thing I would do if I was an artist, just to build up my yeah. artist profile. You know, I don't know if you're, if you're tired, I feel lazy, but I want to know if I can take some phone call, if you sit on the club. You got calls? Yeah, sure. Take some phone call. All right. We, we, we don't have no no because we never say it, but yeah, so somebody. those of you who want to call, call and don't stray from the, the reason that we are talking about. I don't want our ignorance, you know. Yeah. Uh, the sister look like she won't go sleep, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to, we fly in, in the yeah, morning. Yeah, fly out tomorrow. Yeah, fly yeah, in. So out. you know, just, if you call me, call me with something sensible in your mouth, I was never lock you off. You <laughs> so simple, never lock you off. So I could yeah. play this until... I have a, um, I understand because I have tonight in California, I have a radio show that I'm doing, but my, they can't, we can't get Irie FM in California. Why not? Because you have to be, you have to actually uh, log in. And when you try to log in, it doesn't allow you because it's a different country. There's something, it's really, it's really wonky. It's really strange to try to do it. <laughs> so I am going to wear this thing every, every, so I have a radio show on OzCat Radio. It's out of Vallejo in California. And I have a show. And my name on my show, my DJ name is Golden Lady. Oh, yeah. And so, and I've been doing it for 16 years. And so it's on Wednesdays, a uh, reggae a radio show on Wednesdays. Oh, so you missed this tonight. So it's tonight, like yeah. So they're playing a playlist for me tonight. Wait till the thing with it. Huh? When I go, go away, I carry the radio station with me. Yeah, you, you and you do your broadcasting. It's, it's like a machine, that's all. Yes, that and my computer, I'm a connect anywhere in the world. I go Africa. Well, you got, you got some serious techies working with you. No, but that's no, no, no. I mean, one go. I don't mean no kind of engineer. So you do that. You can just lo just, just that. Long as you're on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, as long as you have a Wi-Fi. Right. You just connect that to the Wi-Fi and then connect your, 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 your computer. Right. And your microphone. Your laptop or whatever. Right in the hotel room. Really? Yeah, because we do, um, we use TeamViewer and we use different different uh, software. But when you go into different countries, sometimes the software doesn't let you have license. It's not licensed oh, yeah? in that country. Yeah, it's just like, so I can look at, um, I can go on and try to get on in California, Irie FM, and I can't get on. Well, well, not I would listen, but... For, to for, listen to your show, I can't get on. For, uh, you can't get it on in California. Mm -mm. Yeah. But I have to, but I tried, to, I did once try to um, log in and I sent them um, an email saying I can't get in Still and nobody got it. back to me. 
And it was just like, I was like, forget Shane, I listen to what I say. And I hope one of them, one of the IT man, them I listen. Because that is a problem all the while with Irish film. Yeah. Most people can't get it. Because there was some programming I wanted to be a, a part of and listen to. And yeah, so I went yeah, on yeah. the day before and tried to get on and everything. And I tried everything and I couldn't get through. Yeah, and well, I'm give like, thanks to the youth. Them, well, some of them, and I say all of them. Give thanks to the youth, them who play forward the country and the step in the next day. But I was telling them, say, you see, when I put up the things, them don't write no headline about things we never say in the, the program. Because that is just total madness. It's like it turned me off, like I want to tell us, because it just locked down everything. It's a nice thing for you have your program and all over the world I listen to it. But it's not nice when you get me personally entangling at some full, full argument with somebody <laughs> we never talked to. <laughs> them, them, you the dangerous, you know. Yeah. Them have yeah. some headlines. But that's there. what it's all about is controversy. And yeah, but, but me, 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 the person who them are talking about, me are talking about, it's like me just mention them. Right. And not a mention negative thing. Right. But through me that talk about something else in the program, them adds that with that and then come out and me ask about it. It turns into an argument. What kind of madness is this? Oh, oh, oh them you just stay away there. Anyway. And so them get if you hear it. So IRFM continuously, every week. I get a conversation about them now. I get it. I look at other places. When I look at it, I see ah, there's a radio station there. It's like you can't go up on YouTube and get a radio station. Right. Yeah. Like I could get um I can get on to Ozcat live. You get it no, live. they have stuff like uh uh, live 365 they have a lot of platforms you know tune in uh different platforms but when you try to get pick up the jamaican stations with using those platforms it just says the yeah. station is not available yeah. you know it's not available because it's in a different country so they don't they don't All right, um, we're wait till them call, you know, call, okay. I, I don't want to stress you <laughs> okay no problem i just enjoy talking but um if anybody has to try to um get a hold of me, um, they could try to, um, I don't give out my number or anything over the phone, but, um, but like I said, um, they can email me, I guess, you know, at third world MG at yahoo.com. And it would be spelled T H I R D W O R L D M G at yahoo.com. Third world MG at yahoo.com. Third world MG? MG for music group. MG. Yeah. M, just the letter M yeah, and G. Yeah, at yahoo. At yahoo.com. And, um, and, uh, and then, of course, if I guess I don't know if they can get a hold of me through s some other means, but, um, but I kind of, um, I don't really advertise. I just take, you know, certain clients and, um, and yeah. it happens over, it's been over 30 years. So I've got a lot, I've had a lot of clients. But I kind of more like word of mouth yeah, well, to get to me. Everybody so. know two like that Jovia car. <laughs> well, not it's everybody would. But but Most in the, in the, in the who, music industry, we but, try. We're cause it's small, small. Yeah. We tall talk. So yeah, yeah so yeah. they can get a hold of me, and I would love to always tell them and ex evaluate what they need, and tell yeah. them I'm I really free with information. I want the music to continue. I want the artist to succeed. I want the reggae music to win. So I'm here to help the artists get where they need to go. Right. And if I can help you, I will help you. And as yeah. long as you, as long as you're serious about your business, I will try to help you. And I want to tell you that anybody call me right now and ask me for Tula um, email number, they have to pay a fee. <laughs> and if you get the visa, you have to pay my next fee. <laughs> it's just so it goes. That's <laughs> Jamaica for you. <laughs> yeah. So we give thanks to the Tula. Thank you, Muta. It was so fun to do this Years and talk about it. the nineties up to now. I know, and I know yeah. it's nice, yeah. and it's and I can't wait till you're back in the United States doing your, uh, you know, your with, with your. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it's it's time. It's really time. Well, you know, me, me, me find myself. Lovely Africa scene, you know. Well, I mean, I forgot to show a lot of them things that we had to about right? Africa. Right, and then have to go deal with the promoters and them all yeah. that crap, yeah. No, but, like, uh, one time, everybody afraid for going there, you know. And am I going there Why everybody did afraid, you know. Because right. it happened when we first go there. But now, smooth. 
Yes. Going to Africa, smooth. Yeah, I had the privilege to go to Uganda with um, Anthony B. Yes. And that was pretty, that was smooth, awesome. Man. That smooth, was really smooth, awesome. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And they, they have their, they're all set up. They're all yeah. set up for the music and they love the reggae. So, yeah, it's not the same like it used to yeah, be. Not, not like that. So, I kind of love the Africa move. I mean, it's not that, I'm not going to America again, but it's not like sure. You know, it's like not with band, you know, I'm go in a university or a college or so. And do a lot of different things. Yeah. Yes, so, yeah. yeah. But, so, but anyway, but you need to come back and do some of the festivals. Yes. Well, it's, it's that man Shana I can't talk about. And what the brother name again, you know, used to do some tour with him already, you know. Rick? Rick, Rick Brockamontes? Yeah. We, we Rick Brockamontes? Yeah. We do it. The last time I do, um, with when you, you did a tour, yeah, yeah with Rick. It was with, it was him, with Rick. Then, we have an next version. Anyway, we can't remember his name, but yeah, we, we, we hope we have a new album. Yeah, there's people saying, but I mean, it's the, it's the festival tours are the best because at least you. Yeah, you definitely. Know, yeah, yeah mental you know, festival so. right now. But anyway, thank you so much for everyone out there listening. And I know it was a little bit all over the place. No, but man, if you, no, man. But if you need. It's, straight, man. It's, so, it's so much information to give in yeah, an interview. Yeah. But like I tell you, and get your publicist, sign up with the um, with the Ministry of Culture. Yeah. Don't waste that inter- that great resource. And start understanding about the awards and and pay yeah, attention yeah, yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah. Don't feel vexed that you don't you don't go in this and that and they're not. They are very Mr. Martin if from Martin and his people are very important to in the process yes, yes. of what he does to bring reggae uh, on a level on an international level. So don't think that oh it's just we always know about that. No, it's very important. Well, and I want to just say that I really thank Mr. Martin for all the times I've called him and asked him to. Help me with somebody's visa, and, and he indeed. has done it. Yeah, man, a good man, man. A good good man. man. So yeah, so they don't these institutions are here to help you. Yeah, man, give thanks. Thank you. Okay. Yes, this is the cutting edge. You know, we'll be back here a little more from two to five forty-five with the stepping razor, and we'll be back Sunday too. Me and Shane Clark, we'll be back here on Sunday. Who oh, did listen to the, the interview with Bev, Beverly, Kenso? One of the sisters them was the original backup in a, the wheelers from them time. She's still alive, still kicking. As a matter of fact, I used to check up for farm somewhere in a Kenso, yeah, in a the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So well, Sunday we'll be back again. Memories, two to six, yes, two to six.